Welcome to the Tepper School of Business Multimedia Series. For more information on the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon, please visit us at www.tepper.cmu.edu slash multimedia. And now, here's your selected video. Uh, all right, well, I am very pleased uh, to have the opportunity to introduce to you today Candace Matthews, who is the Chief Marketing Officer at Amway. Um, Candace also earned her Bachelor of Science from Carnegie Mellon and then went on to earn her MBA at Stanford University um, and then began an incredible career in marketing with General Mills holding roles, not only General Mills, but Procter & Gamble, the SEPA Vision Company, Coca-Cola, then became the president of a business division of L'Oreal and now is the chief marketing officer at Amway where she's really building a global marketing corporation. Um, Candace also somehow manages to do it all. She has three kids and she's on the board of several nonprofits. And um, her professional expertise and community involvement has had her featured in several publications, including the Wall Street Journal. So um, please join me in welcoming Candace Matt. Good afternoon, everyone. Come on, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, did everybody finish crying over the Steelers? <laughs> Myself included. Um, but it is absolutely a pleasure to be here with you today. You know, I am thrilled to return to this campus. I love this campus. This campus made me and started my career. Um, you know, not only as an alum of CIT, but the foundation that I got here and the support system that I had. I actually had a breakfast with some of the faculty this morning and the head of advancement came and I hugged her because she was in alumni relations when I was an undergrad and then you know, a few other people came in and it feels like old home week. And so it's really an honor for me to be able to share my experiences and my career with you today. So, Feel free, you know, I guess, you, I don't know if you, ha you don't have to hold questions to the end. I'll take a question at any time. But I'm gonna talk to you about global rebranding and what I've had to do, particularly at Amway, and the challenges that I've had to work through. And, you know, as Caitlin said, I've been with Amway just about three years. And in that three years, I have traveled the world and been on the all six continents in which Amway operates. And in that, I learn a lot about the cultures. And it's important that you understand how cultures play in what you do. But Amway is just over 50 years old, which really, comparative to a lot of the American corporations, is relatively young. But we're still established in many ways. And now we're going through a massive transformation, growing from in 58 independent entities to a truly global strategic enterprise. And we're rebranding ourselves, very similar to what you're doing here at Tepper. I mean, when I was at Carnegie Mellon, it wasn't Tepper. It was GSIA, the Graduate School of Industrial Administration. And just like you're branding Tepper, I've got to brand Amway and really figure out what it means to around the world. You know, and so really what I want to talk to you about today is really about global branding, what I would refer to as the Amway brand and the Amway way. And hopefully some things that I might share with you today will help you in your career, in your journey, in some of the decisions that you have to make. So let's start. Now what started out as a company literally named for the American way, has evolved into a truly global entity and a $9 billion enterprise. Three years ago when I was approached about joining Amway, I was really shocked. I actually said when they called me, I was like, Amway? You still exist? <laughs> but then I went and met the people, it was seven billion at the time and said, how can a company so big, so global, be so under the radar? 
hence my job. Now Amway has always been a sales driven, distributor focused organization and have really not consist consistently invested in brand building or reaching out to consumers in a way that you would do at traditional CPG companies. But together with sales and marketing, we had a new job to do and we wanted to make sure that we built this business in a very different way. So when I looked closely at the company's strategic agenda, which was changing, I knew that I really wanted to be part of the transformation. Now what's really exciting is to be able to lead a transformation from a position of strength versus when you're losing sales and you're losing money and you don't have the foundation to, to do it. And so it was that foundation of the company that really, really made me want to go there today. So what I'm gonna show you today is, I'm gonna demonstrate brand building Amway style. Now we have a strong record of transporting successes from all the way around the globe to other places around the globe. And it might not seem quite linear, but frankly, neither is my job. I hopped from one country to the next. Matter of fact, two weeks ago, I went around the world in seven days. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is try to share that with you and take you across the globe just like my job does. So the Amway story begins in 1959, by the way, which was the year I was born, with two men in Ada, in Michigan. Rich DeVos and Jay Van Andel were best friends. And they both served in World War II. And they launched several small businesses of their own. And frankly, Amway was not their first business. It was their seventh, which means they had failed many times before they were actually successful. And they really wanted to get into a business that helped people get into businesses for themselves after all of those failures. So they started with a few basic elements that every business needs. Low startup costs and the strength of a company that's going to bring them quality products and support. Matter of fact, their products, their first products were laundry care and home care products and they were green before green was cool. So all of their products were biodegradable back in the 1960s before anybody talked about the green movement. And not only that, they also had a money back guarantee. They also had a business opportunity. And with that, they created rewards for the distributors. And they allowed fledgling entrepreneurs to earn money based on the hard work that they were willing to invest, which is really all you want to expect from anybody. And global expansion, that was natural. The freedom to build your own business and to literally go around the world, key is understanding all of those cultures as you go around the world. And being an entrepreneur and building your own business happens to resonate in every culture. So Amway was in the 60s and 70s an American icon. Many of us grew up with an Amway distributor in our family or down the street. Sometimes you said, oh, I don't want to talk to you right now. <laughs> but it enabled them to earn extra income and earn very, very valuable skills. So some people made life-changing incomes and Amway quickly became a leader in the direct selling industry. And you know what? Amway even leveraged what I would call the offline social network even before Facebook ever existed. We had three million distributors around the world and in a, in a very powerful network that now has only been surpassed by what social networking can do. So Amway then ventured abroad, first to English speaking countries, and then to some of the largest economies of the world where the idea of free enterprise took root. And then in the 80s and 90s, when Amway completed a very aggressive global expansion, they found, again, we're on six continents. The last country opened was in 2008 in Vietnam, and I had the pleasure of being there for the opening of that market. 30 years ago, 90% of Amway sales was inside the US. Today, 90% of our sales 
are outside the U.S. That's a huge amount of global business outside the U.S. We're no longer a soap company that we were in 1959. We focus on three main areas, nutrition, beauty, and water technology. Now, Amway is still owned by the two families, the DeVos and the Van Andel family, and we're now in the second generation. And it's beca partly because it's privately held that we've been able to maintain a low profile. But that's changing. And it's changing in a way that we're proactive about making it happen. So as we look at what we want to make happen over the next 50 years, it's really the challenge to transform an international holding company of these 58 conglomerates to a global enterprise where it's strategically driven and the enterprise is first with strong brands that consumers know and will ask for by name. Can you name me an Amway product, the, a brand name of an Amway product today? Very good. Where are you from? India. India. Did you know that before you came to the States? Artistry. Where's Jane? We got to mark that down. That's good. <laughs> That's it. But it also is about balancing the disciplines of sales and marketing and improving the ways that we synergistically capitalize on the more than three million distributors that we have around the globe and making Amway and Amway's products more relevant to our consumers. So after, over the past three years, I've been working on the strategic agenda that's been known as growth through innovation. And one of the pillars is connecting with consumers. Now, to many of you, especially those taking these marketing courses, that might not sound that innovative, and it might not sound <coughs> that exciting. But in order to truly understand, let me explain where the company was about five years ago, as recently as five years ago. We had a significant challenge that we had to overcome. And it's really might have been our own success. You know, if you sustain consistent growth over time, you can be a bit complacent and you can go into maintenance mode. And I think that's where we were. People were cautious. They were afraid of taking risks. Things had been done one way and, that's the, and it had been successful, so why change? Even our R&D pipeline had slowed. And we were just becoming iterative in our new products. Now, we've got, we happen to have the world's largest brand of nutrition products in a brand called Nutrilite, yet nobody knows about it. Now, I don't know about you, but I know in your marketing courses, if you have a brand, is the role to keep it a secret? <laughs> That's what we had, almost an embarrassment of riches. We realized that we needed an enterprise strategy and a focus, and our distributors needed more. They needed help, they needed support, and they needed to understand how important consumers could be. And our shareholders, the families primarily, realized that if you're going to do it, you better do it from a position of strength and not when you're in trouble. So, for 50 years, we did very little messaging outside of ourselves. And we really only talked about the business opportunity. And as you can see from this illustration, our brands were incredibly fragmented, not at all aligned globally. Local autonomy allowed for inconsistent look and feels. These are some of the websites that existed when I joined the company. And because of that, you don't get any brand equity. So in 2007, our global awareness and favorability was not very positive everywhere. Of course, we had some great businesses like China that were huge, but we also had some that were below the line, and that's not where we wanted to do, wanted to be. So we acknowledged straight on we had a huge task ahead of us, and we needed to do something differently. And even at that time, our North American operations didn't even operate under Amway. It operated under a name called Quickstar. And so one of the first things we did through this transformation was to say, no, we are Amway. We acknowledge that, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we are taking back our name. 
So Quickstar over the past three years transitioned to Amway, going through an interim stage where it was called Amway Global, and now it's fully back, back to Amway. And I want to talk to you and show you just briefly some of the things we had to do, particularly here in North America, to make sure that people knew who Amway was. Kate, can you run that? Today, that company operates in 50 different countries and helps put over 3 million people into business for themselves. We're Amway Global. In North America, we proudly operate as Quickstar. We have $6.8 billion in annual sales. We hold over 700 patents. And we sell more than 450 different products, including Neutralite, the world's top selling supplement brand. Together with Artistry, one of the world's best-selling beauty brands, we're also the number one online health and beauty retailer in America. We are a company of innovators, pioneers, leaders, and we're a company of opportunity. Now you know. To learn more, contact your Quick Start Independent Business Owner. So we did that in the U.S. to put the Amway name back out in public. We had to do it from a very basic understanding of telling who we are, telling what our brands are, telling how big we are, so that people can say, oh, wait a minute, or as we say at the end, now you know. We have then evolved that campaign because we've gone from the basics to what is now called the power of positive. Can you run that one? And let's show the evolution of where we are now. You can always find a positive opportunity when you know where to turn. With Amway, there's opportunity to pursue another. You can always find a positive opportunity where products created for healthier living and the ability to own your own business can help you take steps toward economic freedom. That's the power of positive. That's Amway. To learn more, contact an Amway independent business owner. Now, if you notice, We've now stopped using Quickstar, Amway Global, and are now back fully to Amway. That may seem like something very simple, but it was a real challenge to make sure that everyone understood in our distributor network that this was going to be a positive thing. And now they are very excited over the fact that we are beginning to talk to consumers directly and advertise. So, you know, our task of really educating infor and informing, beginning with the first campaign and now moving to the power of positive, has really led to increased awareness, but also increased sales in North America. That was, a, that was a major part of what it was trying to do. It's also changed our favorability back to positive, which in our business, when you measure favorability, you actually measure net favorability, which is what people think good about you minus what people think badly about you. And it is possible to have a negative net favorability. And we've been able to bring that back to positive. So we've seen dramatic results in these three years. And we're very proud of where we're beginning to take the North America business. Now, back in, 19, I mean, excuse me, in 2007, we celebrated 50 years. And we knew that this would be an occasion for unifying the globe around a new Amway identity. Inside the company, but more importantly, outside the company, because we weren't spending enough time talking there. And so that 50-year milestone really gave us the opportunity to align our global campaign, to give a vision to where we're going as an enterprise, to connect to consumers and connect consumers to our company, which they really have not been in the past, and really for us to just pervasively interrupt the status quo. We had done many things the same way for a long time, and we had to do something differently. This was one of the times when it was a, an opportunity to create a global brand identity, and this is what we did. What we do, did was take the basic Amway line and actually create what we call the Amway brand identity. Now, if you look at this closely, you'll see that the blue circle says home for our home care business, the red says beauty, and the green says nutrition, and the platinum circle around it is for the business opportunity. We did this because people didn't know that Amway had products. 
And so we had to convince them from the, just by looking at our identity that we were actually a business, a business that sold products for consumers, but a business that also had the business opportunity. And so when we ended our 50th anniversary, we had brought this to life everywhere around the globe. And it was an amazing thing to do because I don't know about you, if you ever tried doing research in one company and getting alignment, I mean one country and getting alignment, try doing it where you have to do it around the globe. So to get to this global identity was a major feat. And now that we're there, everybody is embracing it and you see it everywhere across the globe. Now in our history, we've done some of our best innovation out of necessity and not necessarily out of being smart. And a great example would be China. We opened China in 1995. And shortly after opening it, the China government banned direct selling. So here we are with a business model that the country has banned. And so what did we do? We started opening up physical presence shops. And today in China, we have over 200 stores where people can go in, they can try the products, the stores are manned by distributors, so the distributors can actually get the credit for what goes through there. But it was that, that basic necessity of having to figure out what to do with our business model that we weren't going to walk away from that really made this come to life. By the way, China has grown to be our biggest market and without it, we wouldn't be where we are today. Now, these shops have become so successful that we are now exporting this to other parts of the world. So if you go to London, you'll see a huge flagship store. If you go throughout Thailand or in Latin America, we have begun to take this physical presence elsewhere. But not only that, we're beginning to take our brand out to where consumers are. So you'll see the mobile buses, up there where we actually take them to different expos so that we can expose our brand and our products. But it's really important that we meet the consumers where they are today and not necessarily try to get consumers to adapt to where we've been in the past. Now, another thing that's exciting in today's world is a digital ex experience. I know I was, I was speaking to a smaller group today and saying, okay, I'm too old to really understand what Facebook and all this Twitter and stuff is all about, but it is the way of life in the future. It is what is going on, and if you wanna be competitive and if you wanna get consumers, you need to learn how to act in that world today. So what we wanted to do was to give our distributors a tool so that they could sell the products, that they could show videos about the products and demos about the products at their fingertips. And in De December of 2009, we launched the Amway app for iPhones. And within 24 hours, it became the number four downloaded business app. So we were quite excited about that. But it literally changed the way that we go about doing business. And not only are we doing it in the US, we've launched the next app in Japan. And so this is not what anybody would think about Amway or how we've done our business in the past, but it is really about how we're going to be doing our business in the future and evolving and changing and transforming and innovating to where we need to be. Now last year, we also explored the opportunity to be a part of the USA Pavilion. Anybody get an opportunity to go to Shanghai to see the World Expo? It was, it was an amazing thing, but one of the things was, it was in Shanghai, they were expecting 90% of the people to be from China, 90% of the visitors to be from China. And so the Chinese government approached Amway which is a very, very strong company in China, and said, we would like you to be a part of the USA Pavilion. And so they negotiated everything and then called me and said, okay, you're in the USA Pavilion, go make it happen. And so I met, went to meet with the people who were putting together the USA Pavilion. And they showed me all of their layouts and they had Amway based on their perceptions in what you often hear is the booth in the back in the corner of the, in the dark, the very back remote place, not prominent, 
nowhere where it was going to be visible based on what they understood Amway was. Well, I had the pleasure of sitting down with them and saying, OK, number one, you're in China. You're not in the United States, even though this is a USA pavilion. Secondly, Amway has 100% awareness, bigger than most of the CPG companies that are American-based. And we have an 85% favorability. That being said, people who walk in here are going to expect to see Amway. And don't make it hard for them. After that conversation, we ended up between Disney and Dow. So it was huge for us, but we were very excited. And it really, it really shows how you leverage the strengths of your businesses in other parts of the world. And like I said, he had an American perspective. When we explained to him the Chinese perspective, and after he experienced it a bit while he was over there, we got moved forward. So in the USA Pavilion, we actually created a video that would show, and I hope it will run, that was really done with no sound and done with, um, with actually subtitles so that people could understand what Amway was, regardless of whether they spoke English or not. to bring our identity to life. So that was one of the things that we did. And we were very excited about this opportunity because it enabled us to take how strong we were in China and, and strengthen the perception of everybody else who went through that USA pavilion. So you know, as you can see, really building the credibility around this brand has really been what I've been very much a part of for the past three years, because without that, we can never move forward. And we can't become the $20 billion company that we'd like to be or the $50 billion company that we'd like to be. And some other exciting things that we've done um, was most recently, two years ago, we announced a partnership that we were going to do with the city of Orlando. And in October of last year, we celebrated the opening of the Amway Center. Now, I don't know how many have had an opportunity to go to, it, um, to Orlando. But if you do, I would suggest that you take this tour. It is the state-of-the-art entertainment facility, and it will rival the Disney's and other entertainment facilities in Orlando. What is, makes this unique is that it was designed with the state-of-the-art uh, technology, so everything inside is digital. So for instance, in the past where you've done a naming rights or branding, you have physical signage. There, it's got over 250 LED screens, and you can change your message depending on who the audience is. So if it happens to be a concert with a lot of female people, we might put artistry up there. If it's the magic basketball game, we'll put Neutralite and, and encourage them to go to the Neutralite magic fan experience, which we were enabled to put in there because we have the naming rights. And not only is this an American, icon, but it allows us to bring people from around the world to see what Amway is. And it also allows us to rebrand our name here in the United States. It's phenomenal. I encourage you, if you ever get down there, to absolutely go see it. And the other thing is, it's got this 40-foot scoreboard in the center. And so actually, on some of the tours, they'll lower it so you can stand next to it. These scoreboards are amazing. And, when, and then when we were there for the first night, they made every screen say Amway. 
So it was quite proud for the people of the company to walk in and see nothing but your brand. Now, of course, we just, it doesn't look like that every night, but, <laughs> it, but it's, it's wonderful to see that. And to top it off, the top of the building is a flat roof, and it actually has Amway Center. So when you're flying into Orlando, you actually see it. So we feel like we've got a great, a great amount of press and PR for the naming rights of the Amway Center. But we also extend that at our NBA relationship with the Magic, and we've taken Dwight Howard to China, and we, actually, and we sponsor the Junior NBA in China. So in 2012, February of 2012, anybody basketball fans? The NBA All-Star Game is going to be at the Amway Center. That in itself will be worth the money that we spent to get all of that press and have Amway Center blazed and blazed everywhere. So it's some pretty exciting things that we've been doing around not only the Amway brand, but our power brands of Artistry and Neutralite. And so now I'd like to talk to you about Artistry, which is our beauty brand, that actually someone knew who it was. So thank you very much. But you know, Artistry is relatively unknown around the world, and we're trying to make sure that it becomes a household name. So for instance, in the US, we sponsor Miss America. But in China, Many of the athletes are, in essence, owned by the Chinese government. So Zhao and Shang, the people who won, the pairs who won the Olympic medal in figure skating last year, were going to get married. And the government wanted to celebrate it because they are such ambassadors for China. So they also wanted to transform their, the, the impression of people around figure skating in China from technical skills to artistry. So they approached Amway and said, we'd love to call this Artistry on Ice. Would you be willing to sponsor it? Well, um, <laughs> what do you say to that? So we did the sponsorship of Artistry on Ice for the wedding of Xiao and Zhang. They brought in 10 figure skaters from around the globe. They did a press event the day before with Xiao and Zhang, myself, the head of our China affiliate, and the head of the Chinese Figure Skating um, Coaches Association. And we had over 300 media there. Now, I don't know how have you've ever held a press event, but getting a press event to have 300 media from around the globe come is phenomenal. And not only that, we were the headline story on CNN.com the next day. So it was an amazing thing to do. And again, it's trying to get your brand out there that people understand. And it was an amazing success. It sold out, and it did so well that they're going to bring back Artistry on Ice, not with a second wedding, but <laughs> they're going to do it again this summer. And they're taking it not only to Shanghai and Beijing and Taiwan. So they're going to three cities this year and actually bringing the whole artistry of figure skating to the Chinese population. And so we're very excited about that, and we will be the sponsors again this year. So look for artistry to become a bigger and more household brand name in the future. Now, our Nutrilite brand, shifting to our nutrition brand. Our Nutrilite brand celebrated its 75th year last year. Now, that's a little weird because Amway's only 50, but yet Nutrilite is 75. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Nutrilite. Carl Remborg, who was a doctor in California, was very interested in Chinese medicine and as well as phytonutrients. Through his studies, he learned that if you harvest plants at the right time, you get the best nutrients out of it. He then took those, turned them into plant concentrate, compacted those into daily supplements, and created the Nutrilite brand. Our founders, Rich and Jay DeVos actually were distributors for Neutralite. And they were so good that they were asked to come work for Neutralite, to which, no, they didn't want to because they wanted to be their own business. They wanted to own their own business. And subsequently later, they bought Neutralite. And Neutralite has become the number one selling vitamin supplement around the world. And yet again, nobody knows. So I've got a job to do because we have an ownable position, positioning that nobody else can say. We create our products from seed to supplement. 
We harvest them on our own farms. We've got farms in Brazil and Mexico and, and Washington State. And we can literally take it through the entire process, which makes it better for you because it's full of phytonutrients. And so when, now that we get to leverage this, and leverage our strength around the world, we're now talking about it and making our products more applicable. Because one of the things also, when you're compacting plant concentrates, you have a tendency to have to take more than one supplement, and they have a tendency to be slightly bigger. So we've been working on dispensing mechanisms so that we can make the product more attractive. And one of the products that I actually brought, and from what I understand, oh, they're here. Oh, OK. OK, here's, I have gift bags for everybody before you leave. But one of the things I put in them is our newest product from Nutrilite, which is a timed release vitamin C. So it's great from a compliance standpoint because it's one pill. It releases the nutrients throughout the day. And I would love for you to try them and call me and tell me whether or not you feel that they work. But it's, real, it's one of those things where it, to introduce Nutrilite to you and hopefully to the rest of the world. So, health and wellness, our main core. The other thing is water technology. Now, Amway started as a soap company. We had, okay, here's a great brand name, SA8. It stands for, there were eight surfactants in the formula. <laughs> That's what our branding was in the past. <laughs> or LOC. Liquid Organic Cleaner. These are our real product names. I mean, honestly. And so you understand why we need to do branding. <laughs> <laughs> and why my job is so much fun. But you know, as we continue to build on our heritage of our business, we really realize that drinking water is a problem. <clears throat> Clean drinking water is a problem in many countries. Now, again, technology can take you to places where you never realized. We had this product. It corroded quite a bit because of the batteries that were in it. So our scientists created a powerless technology that is referred to as e-coupled. It was put into the water treatment systems. And not only has it built our water treatment system business to a billion dollars in sales, but we've also been able to transfer that technology. The technology is now called Qi, C-H-I. It is a global technology of which our team was part of the standard. And if you actually lo have looked at some of the recent Dale Latitudes, it actually has the built-in wireless technology built into it. And this will become a household standard, just like the Intel inside before, the wireless technology, and it came all about because of the issue that we had with our water treatment systems. But I really wanted to share this one because I love the little girl in this picture. This was actually done by our affiliate in Taiwan, but you can see we could utilize that anywhere, and knowledge comes from anywhere, and great advertising comes from anywhere, and I don't know if we have the... Do you want me to switch over? Can you try? It's a very simple ad, and it shows how something that simple can really go to many countries. Let's see if we can. This is the Taiwan ad. Oh, we missed the little girl. <laughs> it didn't start at the beginning. Anyway, the little girl's drinking. It's the pure glass of water, but she's just adorable. And it's one of those ads that we've been able to transpose around the world. And that's the great thing about being a global enterprise and really understanding what works in cultures and what doesn't work in cultures. And children work everywhere. <laughs> And speaking of children, I want to talk about our philanthropic efforts. Because part of make, what makes us who we are is giving back. And Amway has always been about helping people live better lives. 
And so what we have is our corporate social responsibility, which is called the Amway One by One Campaign for Children. It focuses on bringing children help no matter where you are. So in Thailand or in, or in Vietnam, it might be around Operation Smiles. In the US, it may be around the Boys and Girls Clubs and Easter Seals. But over the past seven years, we've given out over $7 million. We've had over 1.3 million hours volunteered by our network around the world. And we've touched the lives of 7 million people, children in particular. This is our corporate social responsibility. We will do it today. We will do it tomorrow. It will always be a part of who we are because it is a fundamental part of our core as the company. And we love the fact that everyone around the globe, regardless of whether they're an employee or a distributor, is willing to give back to touch the lives of someone in need. So that's our one by one campaign for children. So the other thing that we, okay, one last thing I need to tell you about a corporate social responsibility. We took our, the power of Neutralite and our technological advancement and we created a sachet of micronutrients that goes on the porridge of children who are mild, vastly malnourished. And it's called the Neutralite Little Bits. We did our first test in Latin America and we found that any kid who used this was more alert, their growth spurts, they, they developed a growth spurt and were no longer mal, malnourished. We are now expanding this to China. And that is our way of taking our technology and actually improving the lives of children around the world. And so we like to say we're touching the lives one little bit at a time and that a little bit can really make a difference. So that's who we are and that's what we've been doing and that's what I've been spending the last three years of my life uh, doing. And there's one thing I do have to say beyond Amway because um, I just met with the marketing group and the women in management group and someone asked about balance and how you do it. I travel around the world all the time. I have a family. I am a mother of three. I have twin girls who are 13 and a six-year-old little boy. And I can do it because my husband chose to be a stay-at-home dad when we adopted our children. My husband has been a stay-at-home dad for 10 years. And I would not be where I was today if he didn't do what he did for me. And so, you know, this is, you, know, you have to find balance and you have to find support in your career. That happens to be how mine has been made to be so, to make me be able to do what I do. And I wouldn't be standing here today if he weren't home with those three plus all the other foster children that we have. And so that's a part of, that's a very big part of my life. And it allows me to be kind of who I am. So I guess with that, I have to stop talking myself and take questions. Yeah, and I think we have time for one question. So. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. OK, so who's got the great question? Yes. I was wondering, why was, it, why was it, uh, really different from being under the radar and going to like profile marketing like being normal Because Amway, everybody goes not market that much. Why? Because of things like this. This is today's USA Today. This is the money section. This is a story on MLM where they're actually not talking as favorably about us as I would like. And so, I mean, but one of the things is you either own your brand or you let others own it for you. And you know, after 50 years of not talking about it, when you realize if you've done all the global expansion and you really have to have organic growth, you can only have organic growth by having a brand and having brands that people want. And so not only the brands that the distributors want to sell, but consumers want to buy. And they don't know what to buy if they don't know who you are. And so, and like I said, fortunately, the company was at this point where they were doing this, under, figuring out, well, we're 50 years old, what do we want to be in the next 50 years? And realized this is something that they hadn't embarked upon and that they needed to do it, they needed to do it in a big way, and they needed to make sure that they had the talent to do it. And so that's how it all came about. <coughs> all right,
thank you so much for coming here today. It's been so fun. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yes. Hold on, hold on. I have some treats. Okay, okay. All right. Three quick questions. What are our three primary categories? Who, who, somebody shout, someone shout it out. And water technology. Water technology is <laughs> happening. Yes. How can you? Come get here. There's one for you. Okay, wait a minute. Wait, what's my? You be bam? Okay. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, what do we have to do in China to keep our business? Set up stores. Set up stores. I hope you have a nice woman in your life. <laughs> Where we do the ad, iPhone apps? Japan, US. US and Japan. She is <laughs> okay, I have treats for everyone before you, when you leave. Inside, you'll you'll get one of our legacy of clean products or um, our home kind home care products. You will get your vitamin C to try out, and you'll get something with our little branding on it. I don't know what else I put in there. Thank you for your attention.